Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm in the garage working on a 2013 Chevy Cruze and it's got the 1.4 liter turbo engine. So this car is in my garage for a timing chain job and the reason for this video is not to outline the whole procedure. So this isn't going to be a video on showing you how to do a timing job on this, on this engine. Uh, but I do want to point out a few key points uh, that that will definitively tell you that this engine is in time. Now, a lot of these are, a lot of these tips and tricks are already in other videos, but there's a few uh, points that I found that are not in a lot of videos, and I think uh, I think these uh, few observations that I've made will really help people out when they're doing this job to make sure that everything is in alignment and that uh, everything works out. Here's a special tool you need or I recommend that you use for setting the timing on this engine. You can do this job without this tool but I don't recommend it. This tool is cheap enough. It's 30 bucks even if you use it one time it's well worth it. This is a OMT branded one, Orion Motor Tech. But it really doesn't matter which brand you get. Just find one on Amazon, one that's got decent reviews, one that's cheap. Uh, I paid 30 bucks for this one. I believe it's it was pretty much the cheapest one you could find. But uh, the quality's decent. Uh, they just don't need to be super tough, but I mean, they're, they are made out of metal, so I, I don't think you'll have any issues with it. This tool right here is for setting the tone rings on the camshaft sprockets. It's basically the, I guess you would call it a relucker wheel that uh, the camshaft position sensors read. So you need that tool to set them in alignment. This is going to be, if you're looking at the front of the engine, it's going to be sitting this way. And this sits on top of the timing cover. And you lock it down with these. It's got three bolts there. It's got this sprocket lock tool here. This is this locks the intake sprocket. It sits on top of the cylinder head and then you tighten it down and then you tighten this down into the into the teeth and it basically keeps it from rotating. You got these pins here. These pins keep your tensioners retracted. There's a crankshaft lock pin that goes here. It's on the engine right now. I'll show it to you guys here in a second. Right here there's a flat metal plate and that holds your camshafts locked in place. Basically a metal plate that slides into these grooves that are on the back side of the camshafts on the back side of the cylinder head and that keeps your camshafts from moving. Uh, it's a pretty decent tool. It's, it's cheap, 30 bucks. But uh, like I said, I recommend that you use the tool. Uh, it's 30 bucks, so yeah, get the tool make your job a lot easier. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set the engine to top dead center on the compression stroke on cylinder number one. And cylinder number one is, this is the front of the engine and that's cylinder number one. So you can see there's a rod in there, a wire, and that basically just tells me when the piston is all the way uh, on the furthest upward travel. So here I got the timing cover and the crank pulley. Now with the engine at top dead center, this round hole, this sits into the timing cover like that. So you're going to want that pointing towards this mark right here. There's a, a pointer mark there. And I would say that's roughly at the probably 2 o'clock position. So at top dead center, like I said, you check, you stick a rod into your number one cylinder so it shows you the, the furthest upward travel of the piston. And you want to line this up with the timing cover. Now here on the crank pulley, you can see these flat slab notches here on the, on the inside of the, of the snout here. With the engine at top dead center, you can see these slabs right here on the crank snout. Those are going to be pointed straight up and down, basically at the 12 o'clock position. And here you can see the that tooth right there. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can see that tooth right there? It's basically going to be at the 12 o'clock position of the engine. 
there you can see the crankshaft locator pin from the tool kit, the special tool kit. Uh, so with the engine at top dead center, that will slide into a recess into the crankshaft and it'll basically just lock it in place so that it doesn't move around. Here on the back side of the engine you can see the plate from the tool kit that basically slides into these notches here on the back side of the, the camshaft. This is the back side of the engine here and uh, that keeps your camshafts from moving around. And if you can notice uh, this uh, with at top dead center, this is on the compression stroke. If you can see, you'll notice that the uh, this is the intake cam here. You can see that the lobes are not opening the valves. They're they're basically pointing towards the back of the car. And these are the exhaust lobes. You can see that they're not opening the exhaust valve. So both the intake and exhaust valves are closed. And on the front. You can see that these lobes are pointing that way. The exhaust lobes are pointing that way. So they're, they're both pointing out. And on the back side, you can see if the, if the camshafts are positioned correctly, you can see that these lobes on the, uh, I believe that's number four cylinder, they're kind of pointed inwards. And these are also pointed, pointed in so that's kind of a uh, thing that I noticed and you don't see it on other videos but if the cams are in the correct position these are going to be pointed in and these are going to be pointing outwards. So at this point we've got the crankshaft locked in place so the crankshaft isn't going to be moving. We've got the camshafts locked in place with the plate back there. So. Both camshafts are locked in place and the crankshafts locked in place. The next thing you want to do is you want to loosen these uh, tone rings and sprockets. Uh, you want them to be able to rotate and you want to loosen these hexes here and you also want a, you want to get a, I used an adjustable wrench to hold on to the camshafts on these hexes here so that you're not putting any unnecessary torque on that tool back there and uh, yeah get your wrench on the back side on those hexes and loosen these nuts these these can be pretty tight so make sure you have a long socket wrench or breaker bar so now that these are loose you can see that they rotate there's no keyways on these these are just on a tapered fit on the camshaft snouts so one thing that I noticed on a lot of other videos they really don't specify what position these are in, the, the, sp the sprockets. They only show alignment of these tone rings, which in reality, it probably doesn't even matter what position these are in. I did see a few videos where they had these lined up at the 12 o'clock position. This half moon was pointed upwards, 12 o'clock position. And as you can see, it lines up with that tooth right there. I did the same thing over here on the exhaust sprocket line it up at the 12 o'clock position and you can see it lines up with that tooth right there. Here you can see I've got the sprocket locking tool in place and this half moon here is at roughly at the 12 o'clock position in line with that tooth right there. This one right here it doesn't lock in place but you can kind of wiggle it around so right there is roughly at the 12 o'clock position. Here with the chain in place, just loosely sitting on the sprockets just for demonstration. A lot of the other videos, they don't point this out, but from this 12 o'clock tooth here to this 12 o'clock tooth, there's 16 links going across. And here, here we can count it out. So there's, there's the tooth right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen right there, and that's the one at the twelve o'clock position. Here you can see I kind of just set the chain on there and I put this front guide in place. Now 
as you can tell, these are still at the 12 o'clock position. I've got 16 links from 12 to 12 o'clock position. Now, on this side, this guide, you want none of the slack. Well, there's some slack there because of the tensioner is not on. But basically, you're going to want these to be sitting at that position there. Honestly, it doesn't really matter, but as long as as long as these are tight, this is tight, and as long as that is tight down there, the tensioner is going to take up all the slack. In order for this to be in time, the slack needs to be on this side. So you shouldn't have any or much slack on this side. So you can see if I pull tight on this, there really isn't much slack there. Now you might have to slide this out and get the uh, the right teeth and the right section of the chain in order to to you, you're going to need some slack on this side to get this guide in here but it's basically just trial and error you're going to have to take it out advance it a tooth or retard it a tooth in order to get the right tension that you need in order to get this guide in place here okay so this is the final step you're going to want to set these tone rings or reluctor wheels, whatever you call them. This is what the uh, camshaft position sensors read here. So you can see they're both identical. They're just in different positions. I believe these are interchangeable. So are the uh, the VVT sprockets. It doesn't matter which which. These are marked intake and exhaust. Somebody marked. I don't know if that's a factory mark, but. Uh, if you look them up on Rock Auto, they're the exact same part, so I don't think it really matters. But anyways, you can see these tone rings. You've got these two flat spots, and it's identical on this one, but they're just in different positions. So that one right there is in that mark, that slot right there is pointing that way, and this one's pointing this way, and they're, they're both still loose. And you're going to want to take your alignment tool. This tool sits on top of the uh, it sits on top of this cover here like so but here we're just gonna place it so that you can see weight lines up and you can see that slides into that recess there and this one is gonna slide into that recess and that's where you want your tone rings so after you set this like I said this is gonna be on top of the timing cover to to actually locate it but you locate them and then you tighten these down and everything's buttoned up and everything's in time. So just a quick recap on making sure that this engine is in time. First thing you want to do, set it to top dead center. You want to set your crankshaft locator pin, lock it in place. Then you want to take this and lock that in place. Note the position of the camshafts. The lobes on cylinder number one, they're going to be pointing outwards. This is the intake pointed outwards. These are, these are the exhaust lobes pointing outwards. And that's at top dead center on the compression strokes, so none of these valves are open. Both, both the intake and exhaust valves are closed. Cylinder number four, you'll note that the uh, lobes are facing inwards. This is the intake pointing inwards. This is the exhaust pointing inwards with the plate in place to lock them in place. Next thing is the position of these sprockets. Now, like I said, these sprockets, it doesn't matter if these are pointed at the 12 o'clock position. What matters is that, is that these uh, tone rings are in place or in the right position. But I kind of liked the idea of putting them at the 12 o'clock position. And another thing that I noted was from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock position at the 12 o'clock teeth, it's 16 links going across. So you set that in place, you set your, your uh, intake cam lock plate, uh, your chain is nice and taut, nice and tight, no slack on this side. Uh, so all the slack is going to be taken up on this side, that's where your tensioner goes. And no, there shouldn't be any slack on this side. So, uh, another thing to note, remember the, one of the first steps is when you have it at top dead center, 
these slabs are going to be pointed up and down, up and down, and this tooth is going to be at the 12 o'clock position. So, yeah, as long as you follow those steps, it's kind of a foolproof way of making sure that this engine is in time. Let me know what you guys think of this video. I uh, just wanted to make this short video, point some of these key points out, and hopefully it'll make it easier for the next guy. Thanks for watching.